Their natural home is deep in the wilds of the African jungle. And when you finally do discover them, well, they just might make you blush. Dan Harris now in our series, Into the Wild. That's a mark of a bonobo. Somebody was here eating worms. We are in the middle of one of the least explored places on the planet, struggling to catch a rare glimpse of man's closest cousin, the elusive bonobo, the so-called erotic ape. We've seen the tracks, and uh, we think we're close. There's a footprint right there. It is an incredibly difficult journey into the heart of the Congo. Over three days, we have to fight our way through hot, dark jungle, menaced by man-eating ants and very persistent bees. Here we are on uh, day three, giving it one last try. Some days, we set out in the middle of the night. But when we finally get close, it is thrilling. Oh, yeah, he's right there. First, we hear the bonobos crashing through the trees. Then their voices sound sort of like a horror movie soundtrack. These are our first fleeting glimpses. They look like acrobatic cavemen. Here he is. Look at the one with the baby. <laughs> it's interesting. Our guide is a researcher from the World Wildlife Fund named Bila Isia Ino Guabini. He goes by Ino for short. Ino recently made an incredible discovery about 2,000 wild bonobos that the outside world didn't know existed. It's a huge deal since these animals are thought to be headed toward extinction. A romantic mythology has built up around bonobos, a species believed to be much more peaceful than the common chimpanzee, who can be ferociously violent. Bonobos have been called the hippie chimpanzees. Yes, well, they tend to solve their problems using sex rather than fighting each other, so that is why they have been termed to be hippies. Sex? <laughs> yeah. That's right, when bonobos have a conflict over things like food or territory, they often resolve it not through violence, but through sex. Check this out. These two bonobos are about to have a fight, and then it turns into sex. Often, it's in very short bursts. So other than humans, bonobos are the only other animals yeah. that make love for fun. For fun, yeah. They are the only one. And this brings them closer to us than any other mammals. Bonobos have group sex, gay sex, oral sex, and face-to-face -face sex. They've even been reported to French kiss. Many people think the reason bonobos are so peaceful, they can often be seen quietly grooming one another, is that their society is run by the females. Right now, however, these incredible animals are critically endangered. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. <laughs> At this bonobo sanctuary called Lola Ya Bonobo, nearly every animal has had its parents killed by poachers. Poachers kill bonobos because their meat is considered a delicacy in many parts of Africa. Hi, how you doing? What's going on? Bonjour. Which is hard to believe when you meet them and see how human they are. In fact, they share 98.5% of our DNA. Go get the camera. Go get them. Go get him. We are allowed to interact with some of the babies, and I very quickly make a friend. What's the name of this one? Mm, Waka. Waka? What's up, Waka? How are you doing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I have a real friend now. Is this OK? Hi, Waka. How are you doing? Huh? Oh, she found some tissues. <laughs> These young bonobos are clearly very playful. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but they're also psychologically vulnerable without their parents, which is why they're given human surrogate mothers. So they form a, a relationship with the animal? Yes, relationship with the animal, because the, the, the baby, they can uh, live without their mother. They cannot live without their mother? No, hmm. impossible. Back in the jungle, Eno says he's witnessed bonobos engaged in very human-like behavior. He says he's even seen them cry. But perhaps most human of all is the fact that bonobos often walk upright. And that's what has led Eno to put forth a radical and controversial theory. Eno says the landscape around here, which is a mix of forest and plains, forces the bonobos that he discovered to walk upright more often. Therefore, he argues, this is exactly the type of environment that would have given rise to the first humans. You think it's entirely possible that the first humans ever evolved right where we're standing? Yes, I, I really strongly think that people may have evolved from this region. That's a big claim. It's a big claim. I understand it, but I think it, it is worth being put on, on the table. The prevailing theory among scientists for decades has been that the first humans likely evolved thousands of miles away from here in eastern Africa. And the experts with whom we discussed Eno's theory largely dismissed it as far-fetched. I may be not taken seriously now, but I, I believe that within the 15 years or 20 years after today, that claim may be uh, proved as true. At the very least, Eno's theory, even if it's a stretch, could get more attention for the bonobos. The severely endangered so-called sexy apes who could teach us a thing or two about conflict resolution. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Our thanks to Dan Harris for that. When we come back, Jake Tapper's interview.